uh, thesis defense. And my thesis topic is about uh, annotation free deep learning method for large scale nuclear segmentation and the spatial neighborhood analysis on multiplex fluorescent images. The committee member um, are Dr. Ro Badger Roysam, he's also my PhD advisor, and Dr. Hien, Dr. Passage, Dr. Erickson, and Dr. Merrick from NIH. So um, I will, before we delve into detail, let's take a look at the backgrounds of our problem. So traditionally, to implement the pathologic analysis on brain tissue, the brain slices are stained in H and E channels at the one single channel, and it is easy to implement and at the economic cost. However, in order to look under the hood, what is actually happening under the brain, we have to admit that the brain is so complicated in terms of structure, molecular function, and spatial, such that the sometimes one single channel might not be enough. So at the same time, the computational analysis tool should also be adapted with the complexity requirements. That's how we come to the reformance of the current quantification toolbox. Thus, uh, we are looking for a, a more thoroughly and comprehensive study that is uh, able to show everything in the brain tissue. We would like to build a tool to analysis in all possible natural scales from the individual's cell uh, level, multi to the cell, uh, multicellular units level, brain region level, and types of the tissue level. Um, I would like to mention that uh, in my whole thesis, the parts for nuclear segmentation are going to focus on the individual cell level, and uh, the nuclear uh, uh, the neighborhood analysis is going to cover the rest of the three level. So this multiplex information integrated tool can automatically produce a super e assay that shows everything um, under the spring and then help us to understand what is happening and then accelerate the drug discovery. So here shows the image acquisition pipeline of our lab. Our collaborative uh, in, in, uh, brain tissue analysis project founded by the National Institute of Health has a very mature image acquisition pipeline. Let's see how uh, the images inputs in our end generated. So first, the red brain image tissue is captured in Dr. Riddell's lab in UT Health, and then the tissue are slices into 10 micrometer slices and stand in an elegant design biomarker cocktail mixture designed by uh, Dr. Merrick in the, the labs of uh, NINDS uh, NIH. And he's also the one designed this compli uh, complicated protocols. We really appreciate that. It is also worth to mention that uh, the one uh, one tissue section can at most stain by 10 biomarkers at a time, but can wash and restain multiple kinds. And this is how we have the 20 plus, 50 plus, and even 100 plus different biomarker channels. And finally, the sections are scanned by multi uh, by multiple spectral fluorescent microscopy to generate the multiplex image at the ultimate input for the use of our uh, image analysis lab. So here we can show that the close up image of the five 10 plex image rounds. It contains two uh, nuclear stain biomarkers, DAPI and histone, and five uh, cell type indicators uh, for the new uh, for the neural microglia, astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, and endothelial cells. So we would like to keep in mind that the wash and restaining step we mentioned before is done manually. So when the lab technician, they put the sections back to the microscope, the misalignment problems can, is inevitable. It is not their fault, but don't worry, we can deal with it. So as we can see that we will stain, repeatedly stain the first channel in all of the five rounds when DAPI, and this DAPI channel is going to be used for our registration. And here shows the uh, the multiplex channel image is so informative that it can reconstruct the cellular information for different cell types showing over here and the whole body reconstructions. Here it only give an example for the neuron where the whole body reconstruction uh, where the whole body can be reconstructed by nucleus, axons and dendroids and other cell types will be like uh, similar in these cases. 
at the complete image analysis work in our whole lab have uh, we have also published in the uh, natural communication. It has been accepted and will be published soon. And uh, this module consists of the image preprocessing, or we can say the optimization module, the quantification module, the morphological module. Um, and here um, I have take charge of the three parts, including uh, the registration of uh, nuclear detection and the nuclear segmentation. And we also appreciate the effort from our, my lab mates, Johandar and Aditi, on taking charge of the, the other parts. And for those who are not quite familiar with the image preparation step, here we can take a glance and the image registration is the parts that we're going to mention in today's presentation. So um, here is going to be the overall of our uh, my thesis presentation. So our whole goal is to develop a scalable method to segment the cell nucleus, and we will cover the three uh, projects. The first one, we proposed a zero uh, human effort uh, nuclear segmentation pipeline, and then we will cover the neighborhood analysis and then multi-round multi image analysis. And uh, before we talk about the detail of our algorithm, we also would like to appreciate or admire the uh, the path work has been done by other researchers. Uh, we use a parameter-based method to generate the noisy annotation. There are a couple of valuable parameter-based algorithms developed by previous researcher. For example, as we can see, the, uh, the watershed segmentation published in 19, uh, 2009 and is a variation in 2014. And the, uh, the multi-scale ablation precaution developed by our lab mates and uh, uh, also developed our lab, lab mates uh, Jabbing and Hong Yang in 2019. However, um, none of them are performed quite well in a crowded object regions, as we can see in our cases, or they are highly limited by the image scale. So our proposed method uh, combines the advantage of the techniques of the uh, blushing of Gaussian and the watershed segmentation and turned out to be outperformed than all of the uh, the past uh, current state of the art modules. And our uh, with the boosting of the deep learning technique, we also oh, uh, people tend to seek deep learning for help for the nuclear segmentation. Of course, we have heard of the famous module like Unix, uh, Fisher Pyramid Network, Mars Carcian, and even the latest, uh, uh, the current one that, that has been pu published currently. However, the performance of those deep learning methods are highly rely on the quality of the annotation effort. When under the circumstance of in our cases where it's zero human efforts where it have been trained by noisy label and they all not perform well in all of those aspects. So our method is the one that outperform all of them in terms of the auto corrections and the classification and the robust to the noisy label. For uh, the type of the specific problem of using imperfect annotation to train deep learning network codes, weakly supervised uh, segmentation, uh, weakly supervised learning problem. It is also consists of a unit work to learn and opt optimization model for the iterative uh, refinement. We use the uh, combined with uh, inspired by the uh, by the works uh, listed in this uh, chart, and we use the Mascara C network at the units and the EM, is EM Inspire network as the um, refinement model. In the end, we outperform all of them and we can achieve instant segmentation, high speed and good performance. For the cellular neighborhood analysis, uh, former researchers, they uh, they tend to seek for help for um, either big data analysis method or uh, probability based method. However, uh, they have the following limitation that either they are limited to only one single cell type of the neighbor cells or they are uh, or they are not robust to the parameters. That means that they are they might be hard, very far from the actual biological model. So our proposed uh, graph representation are inspired by the study in 2016 by Inner that uh, not regard the cell, cell disruptions at the isolate point, but also the uh, connected graft. And, and we also use the idea from Yao's work of the association rule analysis, where we directly use it for the feature selection analysis. And for the image registration, 
um, they normally divide it into the part, uh, the algorithm types of either key point base or the CEN base. Um, although the CEN based method or deep learning methods, they receive quite good performance. Uh, for example, these uh, voxel, uh, voxel morph model that has been published in NIPS like in, in last year. However, it can not, it can still, it still have the limitation of the image scalability. So. Uh, we go back to seek for the help of traditional parameter based method or inspired by the one of the most efficient feature selection algorithm or ORB method and modify the algorithm to the to the texture based method. So uh, this contribution get provide a summarize of uh, uh, our improvement compared to the state of the art method we have mentioned. So in the um, in the following slides, we are going to mention how we compete uh, our method with the state-of-the-art uh, state method, which is uh, tolerance to the noisy training sets, and so the crowded object uh, solutions and able to do a self-supervised learning, and it can provide a self-classification at the same time. And for the uh, for the neighborhood analysis, we define a good model, and it can provide the changes uh, not only in health spring, but also in different cell types and tissue situation and our registration algorithm compared to the state of the art, we are more accurate and scalable um, and do not have the limitation of the image scale and have higher uh, higher speed. And we also propose the unsupervised measurements to evaluate the result in, in real time. Now we're going to talk about the first main project, nuclear segmentation. So um, the uh, um, let's see the challenges of the nuclear segmentation in the red brain images. So we can see that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the multiplication of the nuclear segmentation is that we still needed to uh, define all of the nuclear uh, define. Uh, we still need the segmentation method to recognize location of the nuclear cells, and it can help us for phenotyping and also help us for the get a precise re whole body reconstructions. And now let's see the challenges. So the first challenge is that our uh, we our data set is such a huge data set. For each single channel, it have around 20,000 to 40,000 pixels. And on top of that, we have like multi channels. We have uh, see like the new ones, S100, all the two, uh, and those uh, different cell type channels. And in total, we have around like 200,000 cells. So there's no way we can do it manually, and we have to find a way to do it scalable and automatic. And the second challenge we're facing here is that the uh, the staining of the nuclear by just DAPI channel, which is widely used, is not enough in our cases. So we can see that there are some regions that the DAPI channel themselves is not uh, didn't stain quite well, and in some regions, it's even barely visible for the nucleus. Uh, so thanks to Dr. Uh, um, our collaborator, Dr. Uh, Merrick in NIH lab, and he developed a uh, a combination of DAPI and a cocktail of histone channel markers, and with a combination of these two channels, the nucleus are more visible and uh, easy to track in our case in, in this red brain image data set. And we also have the challenges um, the, the, uh, uh, of the variability of the nucleus. As we can see that the nucleus in the whole red brain and it's always it's have the variability of the density, size and the morphology. And more importantly, the spatial distribution, that is the part that brings us the, the biggest problem. So we can see a lot of regions in it, like the cortex layers, the cells are distributed sparsely. And for the regions in the hippocampus, and where the cells are located so close to each other that even for human eyes, it's very hard to recognize them. So our the big the main problem we're trying to solve in this project is that we're trying to how to, to we need to find a way to separate the densely distributed object. And the other uh, the challenges we have for a uh, for conventional algorithms are that um, I have spent the, the whole summer doing my summer intern in NIH lab to trying to find a solution for the base method. However, uh, no matter how much I tried, we still 
face the problem of the like the densely packed region, they are unable to give a reliable segmentation, or they always have the mis uh, the misdetection, over segmentation, or under segmentation errors that like the like the systematic error that's unable to solve. So uh, we know that the conventional method needs no human effort, but have systematic error, as we mentioned. Whereas the deep learning method, they have good accuracy performance, but requires a large amount of good uh, quality human annotation. So our proposed zero human effort approach is the hybrid of those two that use a convolutional method to create a noisy training data set, and then use the improved deep learning method to train the model. And it's able to achieve fully automatic no human effort and large scalability. So uh, here is the, uh, the pipeline of our proposed uh, for the automatic uh, uh, nuclear segmentation. So we will use the DEPI and histone channel, uh, which is only staying for uh, this thing for all of the nucleus. Uh, we use this channel for uh, use the conventional segmentation to create a data set and use the iterative training model to uh, improve the segmentation quality. And we will use the background recovery also at the iterative testing to recover the DIMS uh, nucleus. And we will have the segmentation decomposition, decomposition channel, which leverage the input from the cell type channel. It can help us to get a proof uh, to identify and, qualify and, and rectify the incorrect segmentations. And for, uh, in the following, I'm going to talk about these four main modules uh, one by one. And uh, before we elaborate the detail of those four modules, I would like to briefly introduce uh, the principle that driven the design of our algorithm. So being aware that our, mo our uh, goal is to build a fully automatic strategy that do not need human efforts. So we start to think that are there any criteria for good segmentation that only need image and segmentation label themselves? So we attempt to examine this problem in the three aspects and that correspond to three different levels. So in the first part, we can see in the pixel level, due to the characteristics of the fluorescent stain uh, nuclear images, and we want all of the signal to be covered in the final segmentation label. So we use the module three, the background recovery, to guide the pixel coverage as high as possible. In object level, and we want a good segmentation object should contain only one single cell type. So we will use the module four, the sparse decomposition, to check if there are any segmentation need to split. And in the data set level, we we want that uh, in a data set lev level, we want that all of the nucleus should be have similar morphology, and that is like el elliptical blob shape. So the concave shape or the triangle shape that often seen in a conventional method, they're not what we want. So we use the module two uh, deep learning method with iterative training to better capture the real morphological model of the nuclear. And, um, the first module uh, tell us briefly tell us uh, uh, the way how we created our initial training data set. So when we got the initial mask, uh, when we got the original grayscale image, we will uh, use uh, some way to do the pre-processing and use a blanch of Gaussian to do the seed detection and also global uh, thresholding method to do the binarization. And then we will use the compactness uh, with the watershed method with the compactness constraint to get the final segmentation results. Uh, we just briefly mentioned that the compactness constraint is nothing but imposed. We would like to force the segmented object have the similar shape, and this will uh, somehow help the, the crowded regions of the separations receive a better uh, result. But we have to admit that this method is still not a a ideal method, but we only use it for the uh, initial noisy training. And the mask cn model is the current state of the R model for uh, instant segmentation. It is able to achieve uh, bounding box detection, classification, and the mask uh, instant segmentation uh, at the instance segmentation at the same time. However, we have to be aware that the uh, original mask cn model they are highly rely they need the input from the ground truth annotation. And when we only provide the noisy label, the performance is, is not good as we expected. And we also want to look at, and we also think that if, if our training data set is not good, is there any way we can change the mask cn model itself to make it easier to, uh, to make it perform better? 
uh, then we should take a look at the mass car CM model. It contains three aspects. The backbone aspect uh, captures the deep features, and then the ROI, uh, the ROI le a level, you use region proposal network to detect the objects, and then they have the header to uh, extract the, the fixed size feature maps and put it into the header for the bounding box detection and the instant segmentation. And we thought that is there any way we can change by the mascara scene model? We have tried. However, it turned out that when uh, we know that the region proposal network, the parts that control the detection of the of the number of the objects, and when we try to set the threshold to the maximum, we still find a lot of uh, crowded objects are still unable to recognize. So we have to find a way of changing um, outside the mascara scene itself. itself. So uh, the typical uh, the typical supervised learning requires good example from training. If it's contained too many noisy data, uh, we will expect it to have a garbage in, garbage out. However, in a weekly supervised learning, it aims to handle a situation where the training is not exactly the same to the expected output. So we have the garbage in, value out. So uh, we want to note that uh, the reason that it can help in our project are the two aspects. For the deep learning network, it can generate the model, so not only memorized when the training data sets are large enough. And also thanks to the properties of our, of our brain data set, we have a majority of the regions that are sparsely distributed and we're easy to segment, have good results. So we want to use those good examples to improve the densely packed regions that are hard to segment. Now, uh, so here we propose the uh, iterative training model with the iterative training network with the uh, the noisy label. So we will we we developed a expectation maximi maximization inspired algorithm to train the mascara state model from the noisy label. So here, our assumption is that we do not know the ground truth, and our whole model, our whole algorithm is trying to estimate the ground truth. We will use the E-step. Um, the E-step means that the outputs of the uh, segmentation, when they said the first time, we were initialized by the uh, noisy training, uh, noisy um, annotation results. And then from the second time, we will use the testing result from the previous time. And for the in the maximum maximization set uh, step, we will train the network to get the, uh, the uh, to get the uh, deep learning model. So this step is nothing but just train a uh, train a mascara CN model. And then uh, the whole process of iteration will stop when the changes of the uh, before and after the training does not have the biggest uh, uh, does not have much uh, IOU difference. And also, we would like to clarify that although IOU has been widely used to uh, compare the difference between the prediction and the ground truth, and here we only use this to, to capture the changes before and after training. So this process is whole, keep it without any human annotation ground truths. And uh, although uh, when we try the interview training, and we still find that there are um, a lot of the, the cells that are missing well, the detections and in the uh, are located in the background. So as we can see, the step zero show us the the method uh, show us the segmentation results by the original mascara scene. So we can see that there are certain number of objects missing in the background. So we want to know that is there any way that we do not train uh, do not use any of the human efforts that we can help us to correct or to find out those missing objects so we have the idea that what if we can reuse this trained model and then created the image that are in the backgrounds at the new image so this one's uh, the steps one it means that we will zero out all of the pixels that detected in the zero step zero and then create a new image and using the same trick model to test it again and the final result will be the combination of all of these uh, testing in the background until there are no new objects detected so the background recovery uh, problem whether oh it crashed okay the uh, the background recovery 
uh, we want to know that whether the background recovery is, is it a efficient model uh, or is it a convergence? So we uh, we observe the number of detected background cells uh, changes over different iteration. So from this chart, we can see that the number of uh, detected cells has been decreased in this situation. This line shows the average and the gray area shows the uh, the variation. So when it's decreased, so it verified that our mo our model of this algorithm converged. And also we have an interesting finding that's this histogram of the stopping quite uh, the stopping iteration for different uh, images. So it shows that the majority of the image samples they stop as uh, from three to uh, they stop at uh, the third, fourth, or fifth iteration. And so it means that they do not take much of the time for training. And for the ones that need longer time to uh, to test are the ones that are crowded located. So it means that our uh, iterative testing or background recovery technique works the most or improved the most for the crowded object regions. And uh, after we tried the iterative training and iterative testing, and we found that there still remain some small class, uh, some groups of the cells that are unable to separate. That means that the uh, there are some still some segmentation object that need to split, but that we didn't we, we didn't split them. So now we want to leverage the help from the multiplexed channel. Our whole assumption is that we assume as a nuclear segmentation mass of the all of the cell types are given a nuclear mask in that P should be regarded at the union of the old cell type mask. So it means that this nuclear channel, uh, the nuclear one nuclear mask should have at least one uh, positive cell type mask. So in this case, uh, we can. So we know that like the nuclear mass is composed in this way. So when we seek it, think about this problem, vice versa, so we if we want to separate them and we simply just need to decompose this uh, summation. Uh, we will just briefly mention that how we generate the input for the cell type mask. We are just simply run a pixel level uh, three cluster Gaussian mixer model on the pixels uh, to extract the uh, to extract the nuclear the, the cell type mask of the each individual cell type the nuclear mask of each individual cell type channels. And the reason why we use three clusters method rather than the binarized method is simply because the cell type channel not only stand the nuclear but also some of the parts of the whole body the pro or the processes and those are not what we want. And uh, when we do the three cluster cluster method, it can simply just extract the brightest part that we are interested in. And then, as we mentioned, we would like to decompose these uh, co the uh, the segmentation. So uh, the general solution is that we would like to use the orthogonal matching suit method, which aim to minimize the difference of the uh, summation of the cell type mask to the nuclear mask. So this is what it shows over here. However, we face the challenge that uh, we have a we have a problem that some of the cases that there are the pixels that are located outside the nuclear mass, but in part, but in stain in the cell type mass, and those are the, the regions that we do not we're not interested in. So we're only interested in this uh, shaded area. So we have to make the modification of this uh, following assumption that we want to make sure that only the cell types, only the pixels inside the nuclear mass should be considered. So uh, we will we proposed a real style of distant functions that uh, we will put all of the pixels that uh, all of the distance uh, that's located outside of uh, when the nucleus and the cell type mask will receive negative we will put into zero. And so with this changes, uh, we make our modification of the non negative uh, orthogonal matching suit uh, match orthogonal matching pursuit solution. So we can see compared our uh, modification to the original, it's only make the difference of this parameter and this uh, positive uh, 
at this nuclear, uh, 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 sorry, at this uh, real low style of distance functions. And uh, we will claim a cell need to be split when that there are more than one uh, channels that's been their, their uh, sparse decomposition co coefficient alpha C is more than the threshold that we predefined. So uh, here gives a couple of uh, uh, some typical example. So for example, these nuclei need to obviously need to split it. And we have the IBA1 oligo 2 which is stand for microglia and the oligodendrocyte channels where their co uh, sparse decomposition coefficient is higher than the open three. And then we claim that this contain two cells and they need to split. Likewise, uh, we have this IBA1 only two channels and they, uh, sorry, the IBA1 and TFP channel and we are able to split. And then for this once we have successfully to separate into oligodendrocyte and a uh, astrocyte. We also want to mention that uh, these approximation, it can also give the cell phenotyping at the same time as a byproduct. Crash again. Okay. Oh, okay. It's here. Okay. Yes. So uh, now we've finished the main organism parts of the four modules for the nuclear, uh, for the segmentation nuclear for small images. And let's see how we apply this on the large image data set for our whole red brain image. Our solution is we build a sliding window for detection and we will remove the object at the edge and then examine the object in a checking window for result merging. So the design of this window need to make sure that the overlap width of the sliding window size is larger than two times of the maximum nuclear size so that the objects can, can keep the original shape even at the edge of the windows. And for our data set, uh, we would like to uh, revisit it. And we contain a quite large data set with a channel where the first three channels, Depi histone and Depi plus histone, stand for the nucleus. And the last three, last five channels stand for their cell type. And we will crop the whole image into uh, 512 by 512 size. And we have total number of around 2000 cells, uh, 2000 images and we have 6,000 of testing data sets. As we mentioned, since uh, we need to set the overlap width around 50, 50 pixels, so the testing data set is much larger than the training data set. And then we are expected to have around more than 200,000 cells. And we not only have this healthy red brain data set, we also have uh, the human as high brain data set. So that's an injury and a totally another tissue and it receives similar scale, but more, uh, more cells uh, should be detected. And uh, our, uh, our whole pipeline is run on a Tesla GPU with 32 gigabytes, which is supported by Dr. Hien's lab uh, and a supercomputer machine. And we also have 40 core CPU. Uh, we, we also modify this for multiprocessing acceleration and for the software part we make it uh, keep it uh, upgraded with the current state of the tensor flow so it's not only work for tensor flow 1 1.9 but also work for 2.1 and for the whole runtime for the training it will cost around five hours for testing will cost around one hour so if we only want to run testing just one hour will be enough and if we want to run from scratch, and we will, the total we will need for eight, we'll need it for 80 hour, uh, 18 hours, uh, just to uh, run for the two iterations. And it turned out that two iterations experimentally will be good enough. And, uh, and now, uh, when we want to evaluate the performance of our, of our uh, final result, and we are going to mention the metrics that we're using. So the first is the supervised metric that needs to compare with the ground truth. I would like to mention that when we compare with the ground truth, we have uh, a small group help us to annotate the, the, uh, the images and so that we can have the golden standard to compare with, but that golden standard is not involving in a training process. So we will typically have the intersection over a union and the MAP that's called the, the mean average positions that tell us the uh, accuracy for detection and, and the segmentation. 
And uh, innovatively, we also um, uh, have the the uh, they also provide the metrics that are correspond to the expectation that we mentioned before. So uh, we so keep in mind that these are profiling metrics. They do not need the ground truth. So we were just looking for the image and the segmentation results themselves to tell us whether the segmentation result is good or not. So uh, we will have the first type of the uh, metric these are trying to indicate us whether how many false negative cells are there. So we will have the signal coverage which contain tell us how many valid signals are included in the segmentation results. So we will make the thresholds, uh, we'll define a threshold uh, for the valid signals and we will simply have this uh, coverage percentage at the total number of valid thresholds and the segmentation mask and to the whole uh, images. So the higher this coverage is, it means that the last false negative cells are there showing in the background. And we also have the cell split rate, which is the number of the cell split object to the total number of up to the total number of object. It just tells us what how many cells need to split it, such as in these cases we have two cells has been split. It. And for, we also have this false positive cells. Uh, we also can tell whether the model did some false positive detections. So we have this uh, low confident rate and it tells the how many objects are unable to classify to any cell type channels. So uh, remember that when we do the sparsity conversations, we are uh, interesting found in it that we found some cells uh, that although they are able to segment, but for uh, we are un unable to put any of the cell type to them. So for these kind of ob uh, the low confident object, it can be two explanations. So the first thing is that they might be false positive detections. So it means that the model is too sensitive that detects something that shouldn't exist, or it could be from unknown class object that are except for the bank five cell types. That's something we didn't know. How um. And we we can this is a the low confidence rates is can help us tell that the muscular CN may be able to recognize the nucleus that are barely visible in the Dapian histone channel. So it means that especially in the injury tissues, uh, there might, might be some cases that even is not visible in the Dapian histone channel, but it should be positive in the in the uh, cell type channels. So it means that the muscular CN model it can uh, tell us something that I cannot tell. And uh, these low confidence uh, can also help us. Uh, it's also uh, up to the user define whether we want to keep those low confidence objects. So, uh, so it's like provide more flexibility of these uh, objects, uses of those objects. Um, and at last, let's see the performance of our iterative training uh, network. So the muscular CN, this column shows the results for the original muscular CN model. So we can see that there's still a lot of object missing in the background. And the bus, and this one shows us uh, the final results after our iterative training, iterative testing. And we also can see that our model performs the best uh, for the challenging cases where the objects are very close to each other. And we provide the metrics to uh, tell us the performance of our results. For the also provides metrics, that's uh, the three uh, expectations we mentioned before. We can see that our uh, compared to the other type of uh, training model, uh, or, uh, compared to other type of parameter based method and the watershed method, which is the training label we have and the muscular CN model. Uh, our final test, our final iterative training with the refinement received the best performance in all of the three aspects. And also we provide the uh, metrics compete uh, with the, against the ground truth, we also receive around 3% higher than the original mass car CN model. So uh, this is, we need to keep in mind that this drop of the noisy to the muscular CN model is simply just let us know that the muscular CN model is unable to ha handle this, this type of systematic error. And our method is able to um, deal with this challenge.
And here shows the final visualization result. We can see that in all of the um, in couple of regions, no matter whether it is uh, crowded or a sparse region, we all receive quite good results. And here it shows that the uh, we also tested this image in the human Alzheimer data set and received quite good. So before we move into the second project, the nuclear neighborhood analysis, I would like to extend a little bit on the usage of the segmentation on the cell type classification. So we offer three approaches associated with the outputs from the segmentation. So the first uh, phenotype approach, we can directly use the coefficient outputs from the spark decomposition that we mentioned in the module four, and uh, the channel received high enough uh, coefficient are claimed as positive cells uh, in the cell type. And we, it is work, it, and keep in mind that this works not only for the corrected segmentation objects, but also for the splitted objects. And uh, this image shows us when we superimpose the neural cells uh, on its indicated channel new end, we can see a quite good uh, performance in the classification. However, uh, keep in mind that uh, since this algorithm is based on an unsupervised pixel classification, uh, pixel clustering, so and also designed for segmentation, it uh, does not work quite good um, for other channels, and so it can only be used as an estimation. And we also offer another approach to uh, leverage the help of the iterative visualization tools. So this one, uh, when we exp export the uh, segmentation mask to the image cytometric format, we superimpose it on the cell type channels. Here we can use at the new one as an example. And the phenotype can be obtained from gated, gating the intrinsic features, uh, that is the average intensity, where the thresholds are generally located in the nadir between the positive and negative peaks of the intensity histogram. And we can see that the advantage of the interactive gating is that the researchers are always able to visualize and change the phenotyping uh, in real time. And however, the disadvantage is that first, of course, this interface is not free, so I have to pay for it. And also, it does not perform well in some other channels. And uh, the last approach for handling the classification and also the approach uh, that we used in our published in our national communication is the classification by the deep learning capsule uh, network. Since this part is developed by uh, our lab mates Jahandar and Aryan, so we will not delve into detail. We only need to know that the outputs of the segmentation pipeline can further run object level classification either on the complete bounding boxes or only on the pixel that are inside of the nuclear mask. So now we can go to the next project for our neighborhood analysis. So we will first would like to recall the first slides of our presentation that the brain structure it is so complicated that sometimes the individual cell level analysis is not enough. And it's uh, it is sometimes it's their multicellular relationship that plays more important roles. So the relationship of neurons and its subsistence cells can be regarded as traffic system when, we, when the neurons are the cars that run in, into some traffic and we have the ambulance and we can regard it as the astro, uh, at the micro, um, at the microglia will come to clean the uh, dead cells and then we have the astrocytes and oligodendrocytes which are staying in green and purple color and they will come to fix and build up the traffic flow. <coughs> So we want to use the detection phenotype result from our previous step to, to profile the co-appearance multi uh, co-appearance multicellular patterns. Here we use a local connected graph to simulate a neuronal neighborhood structures. We say a pair of uh, uh, centroid neighbor cells are, are interactive when the neighbor cells are located inside the cellular structure, uh, cellular regions, uh, inside the circular regions within the effective range. Oh. And we use a single uh, measurement. We want to use a single measurement, which is defined by the kernel density estimation model to measure the nuclear neighborhood. It is uh, quite straightforward of this uh, formula that when, a, uh, when 
enable cells located inside the affected range R, its relationship to the centroid will be assigned to a value which is between 0 and 1. The closer it is uh, to the centroid, the higher the value's value is going to be. So our proposed model integrates the consideration of both density and distance of, new, of uh, neural glia influence compared to the original one. It's only uh, talk only mention the distance, and also our model is robust to the affected range. This this property is very important because we don't have the processes connections information from this data set. So we can only estimate the biological model according to the Euclidean distance. So when in our model, we will use a soft threshold and the results will not change too much uh, according to its meta changes of this effective range. So when we profile the kernel uh, neighborhood attraction value by co-location co rules, we receive some interesting findings. So first, uh, we can see that in one neighborhood cell type cases, we found that the microglia had the highest uh, uh, highest value. It's telling us that the microglia and also can be regarded that the ambulance in the traffic, and this is the most responsive one, and have the closer relationship with the neuron. And we can not only pick the most important single cell type, we can we can also think about it in a group work way. And we can see that when the multi uh, neighborhood type cases, it can also be analyzed. And this also shows that our model is very efficient fast when it's run for around 200,000 uh, 200, cells just can thus finish in 20 seconds. And uh, these uh, dash line tell us that the oligodendral size start to surpass the significance of the endothelial cells in this region. So something in this region uh, might happen, make, make, make that the endothelial cells uh, turn to be more impactful. And we also analysis a stroke red brain tissue and take the two symmetric regions in both the control and the injury site at the reg uh, region of interest. We use the feature selection method sparse group lasso, a sparse group lasso to, ex uh, to examine how the co-location feature make the contribution to injury versus the health uh, site. We plot the graphical representation of the neuron gliotype that have the largest uh, lasso value and the smallest lasso value. It is uh, obvious that the graphical that the graphic plots in the formal one express a larger alteration between left and right side, and the smaller one receive a smaller alterations. So then we are going to move to our final project, that is the multi round image registration. So recall that our whole 50plex multiplex image data set contains five rounds of uh, 10plex images. So each of the rounds uh, of the washing and restaining, that is the, the reason that caused the misaligned issue. So we are going to solve that. So the first challenge we are facing here is the scalability of the data sets. So we can see that uh, our data sets uh, contain at around 3,000 300,000 uh, 300, key points, and especially when you want to calculate the key point matching, you need to you need to calculate a distant metric which is the size of around 3,000 300,000 times 300,000, and this metric is it's uh it's over the capacity of the most of the common compute uh, computer memory, so we have to find a way to avoid calculating these big metrics. And also, uh, it has the it needs extensive runtime that we tried even uh, we run for a one pair of image for the original method. It take around 10 hours, and that is something that we definitely want to speed it up. And uh, we also found that the current state of the RCM based message, uh, for example, the voxel morph method, one of the famous one, it's uh, work quite good for small regions, but it's not good for large images. And the second challenge is that when the key point distribution in the whole brain is not based on the texture, the key points will located only in the dense regions, uh, for example, the, the, the in the hippocampus regions, where the sparse regions, they might have very less key points located. And this will cause the misalign in those sparse regions. So the results will be similar to this rabbit alignment issue showing in our image. 
and we are unable to show the misalignments uh, cases because of limitation of the com computational capacity. So uh, we have to find, our goal is to find a solution to control the distribution of the key points. If uh, one can say that, oh, um, if uh, there are so many good models works well in small images, why can we not run it in cropped images and then stitch it together in the end? So here comes our third challenge, the age effect issue. So we can see that the misalignment each situations in different regions are not exactly the same and also some regions lack of efficiency key point. So we know that the whole image has to run as a whole. Therefore, to, so to solve all of the problems we mentioned, we propose a tile based large image registration methods. So uh, this part show us the way how we design the, uh, the tile. Uh, we claim that the overlap regions as uh, one tile and uh, we will set our overlap width, uh, which will help us that um, the key points has been detected in even at the ages. And uh, we would like to um, set the, the strength for the tail with is that we, wa we want each of the tail at least have around five key points. And even though there are some key points um, there are some regions that have no key point, but it's fine. It will, as long as the majority of the, the regions have key point, that, see, that our, our, our method still works. And also, uh, we are looking that the overlap width is similar to the misalignment deviation, but even if it's, we don't know, that uh, still works. And also, we, uh, we would like to know that uh, the the number of tiles L that uh, it can help us to accelerate it by the multiprocessing because we can run uh, the key point extractions and uh, matching uh, in multiprocessing way for each of the tiles. And uh, here we have the uh, and the steps we provide the improvements of the for feature extraction. So we can see that the original method, if we do the feature extractions for the whole image and it can extract a couple of features, however, uh, we cannot control the distribution of these key points. When we, we apply our tile based key point extractions, we can guarantee that in each of the tile, there are a certain number of key points has been detected. So we can see that compare left and right side after our improvement, these red dots are the new ones has been detected. So we have forced a uniform sampling cases, which is more feasible for the texture based image. And we also make these uh, tile based improvements on the key point matching. Uh, remember, we're saying that that is a huge uh, matrix of uh, around 300,000 by 300,000. That's calculation we want to avoid. And we can simply do it by making it a tile based uh, calculation. So we can see that uh, when we use for a key point matching on the tile images, we can reduce this calculation from n times m, where n and m is number of key points, to the n divided by l times m divided by l. So in that case, we are successfully break the limitation of the of the image scalability, and we can also um, and we also solve a lot of time of re reduce um, a lot of calculation of uh, the key points that might not be even used. And for the RENSEC, uh, uh, for the key point, uh, for the final final transformation estimation, we also propose the improvements according to the to the uh, tiles. So uh, the original RENSEC works uh, very simply. It just run a couple of iterations until there are uh, the, the optimal model is the one to receive the the minimum uh, outliers. And our tile based improvement is, is nothing but that we found that uh, when we run the original RANSEC, there could be the cases that the selected uh, key points, they are only located in a close region. So although the final outline outliers might be less, but it turned out that there a lot of the other regions is not aligned. So when we make the chain for the tile, and we can make sure that these uh, uh, these key points are selected for in a tile hierarchy level. So it means that we will select the we will uh, first select the tiles, and then for each tiles we will select each uh, 
key point. In this case, we can make sure that the uh, the aligners which are used to estimate the model, they're not they are always located not in the same tile. And we also provide the also provides the measurement to tell us the performance of the second of the registration. As uh, as we can see over here, uh, it is nothing but just compare the binary the image before and after uh, for for the target image and the the aligned source image. So we can see that the smaller this error rate is, the better perform it is. So uh, this example show that when the error rates receive si uh, 65.1, it's uh, received quite a good alignment. And it's also, uh, the error rates also benefits us to localize the sub regions where uh, it is uh, still able to recognize, but still able to to align and those region are mainly comes from the artificial errors like the folding arrow and we would like to uh, and this reason can be easily captured by our error rates and our solution to this region is that we're simply uh, localize this region and then rerun these uh, rerun the registration on this local region again and here shows our performance of uh, multiprocessing collaborations. So we can see that for, especially for the key point extractions, we accelerate by multiprocessing, we are able to achieve it uh, improvement for from four to five times. And likewise for the whole registration pipeline. And now it's the final summary of my thesis. Uh, in the end, we proposed, um, we mainly talk about three projects. For the zero human effort nuclear segmentation, we propose an iterative training framework that is able uh, that contains the background recovery and sparse decomposition, and we uh, have improved three percent compared uh, of the I, uh, IOU segmentation performance compared to the original Muscular CN model, and especially works well in the densely packed regions. And we are able to uh, create the automatic proofreading to correct the segmentation error by itself, and also able to generate a classification error, a classification uh, for cell type phenotyping at the byproduct. And uh, our segmentation result can be further used uh, for other classification, uh, like the deep learning method or uh, the interface to inter or the interactive interface. And we also introduce uh, the young supervised performance measurement at the expectation criteria for the segmentation. And for the for the nuclear um, for the cellular nuclear neural neighborhood analysis, we proposed a kernel based method which is more fe feasible for the biological structures of neighborhood. And also uh, it is able to efficiently profile the Neighborhood changes not only in health spring, but also capture the alterations okay. over different situations. And uh, our registration, our tail based uh, large scale reg image registration solutions is able to break the limitation of image scalability. And also, uh, we improve uh, the running speed by four to five times by uh, basic process accelerations. And we also improve, introduce the unsupervised measurement to uh, evaluate the performance in real time. So in the end, we developed a whole uh, complexity analysis tool for the whole brain uh, analysis, which can accurately seg segment the nucleus on the multiprocess image and for further analysis. And future for the future works, uh, we have to admit that our nuclear segmentation model, although it works good, uh, but it's not perfect. It's mainly because it's the constraints is that our assumptions we want to put zero human effort. So uh, we receive there are still a small amount of uh, atypical nucleus there. For example, they're a donut shape and they're un unable to correct it even by all of the method we have tried. And we can also start about the improvement of the cell splitting by making the uh, replacing the unsupervised pixel clustering by, for example, the whole body reconstructions, which will be covered, uh, which will be done in my for my lab mates uh, Aditi. And also uh, for the for the phenotype, we are we're hoping to find use a re replacement of the commercial software, and we are. We're looking for an interactive interface that supports the large scale image validation, and that part is uh, expected to be done by my lab mates Lin. And uh, for the neighborhood analysis, uh, and we 
if we have a more uh, accurate processes tracing estimation, it will help us to uh, to remodel our uh, neighborhood analysis structures. And also, if uh, we can explain extend our three D analysis to three D analysis, and that will be more close to the uh, actual reality cases. <laughs> 